guys, it's Tal from Shine Bright Design and today I am bringing you a blending techniques video. And this is a blending pencils technique video. Sorry, I had to make it more clear. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do some um, shading first and then we'll work into the blending techniques. So I'll probably do a quick time lapse of this and then we'll move into the blending techniques for you guys. So guys, I've done my I've done my shading and I've basically done a one color pencil on the top row here and then two color pencil on the bottom row here. And it basically is a combination of a warm yellow and an orange. So the first row, the first column will be the blender pencil, the second column will be the burnisher pencil, the third column will be the white pencil, the fourth column will be a solvent, so a white solvent of any sort, and then the fifth column will be um, baby oil and then the last column will be alcohol markers which will be very interesting um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to start off with one one row at a time and then we'll look at the results of that okay so with the colorless blender pencil I'm going to do the one color pencil um, shaded ball so basically I'm going to go in from the center at the lighter section in circular motions, I'm going to blend. And I'm basically going to eventually just scum all the way around. I tend to like using blender pencils also at the very end because I like to blend everything together. Because I find using a blender pencil it starts to um, it starts to flatten the the grain of the page. So as you guys know or may not be familiar with uh, the 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 idea that when you Flatten um, paper. It reduces the amount. It reduces the workability of it. So when you start flattening the grain, pigments struggles to get into the grain of the paper. So that's why I always, I always recommend blending at the very end after you've layered all your colors. The only time that I would ever say it's okay to use blending techniques is if you're using a paint thinner, but I'll show you that later on. So continuing with your circular motions. And what you tend to notice is that this blender pencil, it basically blends all the pigments together and fills all the grains of that paper. Which is why I do recommend doing blending at the very end because you are using this colorless uh, pencil to fill in those uh, grains. And so as you can see now, those grains are pretty much flattened. So that is why I recommend using a colorless pencil towards the end or any blending technique towards the end. Alright, so that's the first um, the first ball. I'm going to do the second ball with the colorless blender. Firstly, I am going to just clean up my colorless blender because I have existing pigment on the tips of it. So I always recommend cleaning cleaning your pig cleaning your pencil just by scribbling it on a clean piece of paper. 
and that way you won't contaminate you won't contaminate anything um, so continuing on same type of method going from the uh, uh, the lightest point and we're just going to do some scumming work from the center and work our way out And I'm using two colors because I just want to demonstrate the blendability of two colors because um, in most cases when you're using this technique it's going to be at the very end when you have multiple colors layered on top of each other and I want to demonstrate to you the what what things would look like blended together and generally that's why I use this scumming method because by doing small circular motions, you reduce the amount of strokes that you see once you've blended everything together. So using the scumming method really gives you a smooth gradient. Just like that. And then, so now that I've, let me just zoom out so you can see the difference between the two. A blender pencil is in my opinion is absolutely perfect uh, if you want to it's it's a great tool um, in terms of blending and as you can see when it comes to blending two colors it's it's a really good tool as well um, so that's the blender pencil for you guys um, there are probably a couple brands that I know of. one is Prismacolor another one is Derwent and I'm pretty sure all the well-known brands do it I actually think Faber Castle doesn't do a blender pencil but there's always like other blending methods as well if you're not into pencils. Okay, so I'm done with a blender pencil and this one I'm currently using is from Prismacolor. And this is PC1077. So now I'm going to move on to a burnishing pencil. And this burnishing pencil is from Derwent. So now I'm going to zoom into the top colour just so you can see how application is being placed down. So as you can see here, I have purposely done my shading really rough because I want to show you the capabilities of blending. So even if you put color down very loosely, you can definitely use these blending techniques um, to get things to look very smooth. All right. So this is the first time I've actually used a burnisher. So I'm going to use it the same way that I've been using the colorless blender, and that is working from the center and working my way out. So doing the same type of method, we are doing some scumming method, which is basically we just do small circular motions, and these small circular motions reduce the amount of streakiness of the blending. And this is very much just flattened the surface. Um, but yes, that is the burnishing pencil. Now I'm going to clean up the burnishing pencil just by rubbing onto a clean piece of paper, and then I'll move on to the second color.
All right, so doing the same type of method, I'm going to go from the center and work my way out using a scummy method. Now I'm not sure what burnishes are made of, but obviously it's not made of the same waxy material as a Prismacolor. And what I'm noticing is that it's not blending as smoothly as the Prismacolor Colors Blender, but it still is blending, just not as smooth. And even though I'm doing the same method, which is the circular motions of the burnt, of the scumming method, it you can really tell the difference between the types of mediums that you're using to blend. It's almost creating a waxy buildup, and you can see that here with like how different pigments just kind of bundle together as I'm moving it around with my scumming method. Okay, so that is the burnishing pencil. Let me just zoom out again. So this is the difference between the two colors. And if you compare it to the blender pencil, it's definitely not as smooth as the blender pencil. So you can see that the ball looks a lot more rough compared to the blender pencil. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move okay, on. So now we are using a white pencil as a blending technique, and you can either use a white blend, a white pencil to blend it all, or you can use any lighter color than what is really laid down. So what it does is by using any lighter color such as white or any color, you're basically going to actually lift the color of the color that's been laid down. So this may look a bit more like a light purple after I'm done with it. Okay guys, so now we are going to do some blending techniques with a white pencil. Now, when you use a white pencil, what it's going to initially do is, yes, it's going to burnish and blend, whatever, as the previous techniques. But at the same time, it's going to lift, it's going to lighten the pigment that already has been laid down. So it's going to go like a light purple, okay? So anyway, same thing as we did before, we're going to start from the center scumming method and then working our way around. Alright guys, so that's using the white pencil. 
Now, I don't mind using a white pencil. It does definitely lift the colour, making it a lot lighter than the colour originally placed down. So right now, if you compare it to the side-by-side, -side, these are purple. This is like, it's like a lavender or a white purple. It's definitely lifted up the colour a lot um, because you are laying that white on top. So, yeah. Um, I definitely like it compared to the burnisher, but I do prefer prefer a blending pencil. Okay, so we're going to clean up this pencil again, just to get rid of those pink um, pink bits on the white lead, which you would see here. And we are going to go with the next color, which is a two color circle. All right, so this is the circle that we're working with today with the white pencil. Basically same thing again. We are going to work through the center, doing circular scumming motion, and then working our way around. Now I can expect that this is going to definitely uh, blend everything very smoothly but at the same time it's going to lift the colour a lot. It's going to make it more like a creamy orange rather than an orange yellow. So if you didn't want to use a white pencil you can definitely use another colour. For example you could have used a cream, you could use a yellow, you could use a green and it wouldn't look as I guess opaque, clear, I mean opaque, um, pastel -y. Uh So if you don't want to change the colour, I do recommend using a colour rather than white. Because of course if you mix anything with white, it's going to become, it's going to make the colour a bit milky. So I can definitely say that by using um, a white pencil from Prismacolor, um, it does make it, it, it creates less wax bloom. Now wax bloom is what you would have noticed here on the burnisher and how certain pigments just bunch up together, okay? So with Prismacolor, there is wax bloom, but obviously there isn't as much as the burnisher. And you, you can tell what wax bloom is, is because bits of it just kind of bunch together. And that's not, that's not something that is to all pencil brands, but it's, that is something that is very common with Prismacolor. But using Prismacolor as one of the controlled variables here, um, you know, that's what we're doing today. I could show you with another um, another brand of pencils but you'll definitely get a similar result okay so we're going to move on to solvents which is the fun part and I want to put away my pencils and work on to solvents alright guys so today we are doing solvents and the two solvents we are using is baby oil which is very common um, a common household object that you would have around and the second one is a white solvent now this white solvent can is generally odorless I do recommend using odorless solvents because one the smell um, it's gonna cause you less headaches and you're not gonna faint um, because there's solvents like turpentine and mineral spirits they're so strong and they're very dangerous if you inhale them too much so I do recommend using odorless solvents um, a really good brand that I uh, like brands that I've used or heard of um, Zested I don't mind them but it's a very Zested is very which is what I have right here Zested is very pungent very pungent of that zest smell it's very artificial at the same time as well but I do love Gamsol and I've heard Mona Lisa is very good. I do have an, another couple brands which you know you can never go wrong with if they're odorless. Um, but yes, today we are using Zestit and basically same type of approach. 
to what we've been doing before. I'm using a brush as a control between the baby oil and the solvent just because I like how brushes apply this. So we are basically glazing and gently rubbing. So you can definitely see that the blending here is very clean compared to the white pencil. And what I like about this is that once you lay it down, you can always let it dry and then you can rework into it. So it's not like the other solvents. Um, generally, once you work into it, that's kind of it. Whereas when you're using, um, when you're using a brush like this, and you're just glazing it on top of the colors here you're actually not you're not damaging that paper and it's still very much workable okay so now I'm going to do the circle below which is right here working from the center and working my way out. What I don't like is when you work with solvents, right? And say you have very thick layers of um, pigment or pencil you tend to lift it because the solvent is basically a thinner and it thins the it thins the paper or not thins the paper it thins the pigment out and it almost becomes it almost becomes like water watercolor paint when you apply water to a watercolor it does lift it it does lift it up and it softens the pigment So, I think the best thing to do is to let the solvents, let me just zoom out and show you guys, let the solvents dry and then it will go from there. Okay guys, we are going to work with baby oil. Now baby oil is a very odd thing to use, but they say baby oil is very similar to paint thinner. So let's try it. Okay, so I'm going to get baby oil and use this as a blending solvent. 
This is um, a cheap alternative to odorless solvents and they're not bad. In fact, I actually think it works quite well. Yeah, I actually am surprised how much I like baby oil, but you know, solvents aren't that bad. Baby oil is very, it's actually not bad to use. It's actually pretty cheap and easy to find as well. The only thing I could say with baby oil is that as a blender, it's actually not that great of a, like it's not great to blend. You can tell here, you can, the, the pigments are quite, are quite stiff. It's not as if it's melted together and blended out. Um, it's only blended out a tiny bit of it. As to if I compare here, the pigments are more blended. Where here it's more, it's not as smooth. But it definitely does work. All right, let's go on to the two color. So that is the baby oil. It's not bad. It's very, because we're using a brush, it's got a very strokey, painterly uh, look to it. Same as what you would see above as well. Um, that would be the same effect with the solvent. Um, obviously the solvents are stronger as you can see from this effect. The solvent just totally wiped that, that pigment off and kind of melted it. Um, so odor solvents are much stronger and I guess you could probably lose, use less, I probably use too much um, but from the top you can definitely see the effects of it compared to the baby oil. Alright let's move on to the next medium. Okay so I'm going to use something very interesting and I'm going to use a colorless marker. Now colorless markers have alcohol and my experiment or my hypothesis with this is that alcohol can be used as a blender. Alcohol, in my thoughts, uh, is very similar to a white spirit. So it's very similar to turpentine or whatever. It has that same type of effect. So that is why I'm using this colorless blender. So same type of approach. We're going to work from the center and work our way out. And I think the best thing to do is do small circular motions. And can you see how vibrant it is? And I believe it's because we are using alcohol. Now, have you ever used alcohol in art? Alcohol has some very interesting properties. Um, if you use it with watercolor, it causes um, it causes like a dispersed effect. Whereas with this, 
I feel like it's intensified the pigment. It's definitely melted the pigments, but in terms of blending, I wouldn't say it's the best blender. But let's just keep going with our You know, it's not that bad. But let's go into the next colour. And as you guys know, with any marker, I am going to clean it up. So same type of thing with what you were doing with the um, colours marker, you basically just scribble out till all that pigment is gone, which is a good enough job right now. Okay, so basically same type of approach, doing scumming method with a marker. Okay, so that's the alcohol marker. As you can see, I've laid everything out side by side for you to compare. And I guess it's up to everyone's personal preference what they prefer. I for one, don't mind, I don't mind either of these, and I feel like either of these can work for me. Um, my favourite is obviously the colourless blender, and then I would say I would say either the alcohol marker or the solvent. Now, I don't mind the baby oil, but the baby oil does give a very painfully effect. And I don't mind the solvent, but the solvent is quite strong and can remove layers of work. So you have to be very, very careful. Very, very gentle at the same time as well. The alcohol marker is very nice, but you will always have that very strokey look from the marker. So it will never blend quite as smooth. So all in all, I do like the blender pencil. And I don't mind the white pencil. Obviously it does lighten the colour. But it's actually quite nice. So if you don't want to use white, you can use another colour. See, I could have used pink, or I could use a lighter form of uh, purple, or I could have used yellow. So white is it, isn't the only alternative. So... The blender pencil comes in first for me, then the white pencil it comes in second, and then I would say the alcohol marker comes in third, followed by baby oil, solvent, and then the burnisher. I don't like the burnisher because it causes a lot of um, waxy buildup, and you can see that from the effects of this, how it just clumps together. Uh, that also happens with the solvent because as we're moving it with the brush, we're moving that pigment back and forth as well. And when you're doing that, you do clump them together as it dries. So that's the thing. When you're working with solvents or baby oil, it's almost like you're oil painting at the same time. So you have to be very careful and almost like glaze it with the brush. So if you're going to go with anything, blender pencil, 
or a lighter pencil to blend is a great technique. I always recommend blending at the very end as well. And you can definitely see that as, as well I've demonstrated. If you have layers of colors, it's always better to do it at the very end. Um, Cause if you're gonna put another color on top of these, for example, you put a color on top of this white or on top of um, this blender pencil, it could almost float on top that glassy feel, that glassy effect. So if you're gonna go on top of any of these blending techniques, solvents, baby oils, baby oil or markers are the ones that you want to go over if you want to build up more layers on top. Obviously because with the solvent, the baby oil and the alcohol marker, you aren't damaging that tooth of the paper. You may actually damage it with the alcohol marker depending on how hard you um, apply, but generally with the baby oil and solvent, you are going to definitely paint or stroke on top of these, um, the tooth of the paper, so you're not going to damage it or um, burnish the paper enough so that you can't work on it. So you can definitely work on top of solvents, um, either with baby oils or, you know, odorless or odorless solvents or white sol white spirits. So that's my experiment. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions or any requests, please comment below. Um, I'm actually thinking of doing another form of um, techniques and doing maybe a shading technique uh, video. There are a few techniques that I use or I know of that you guys might like to learn on a more close up scale. Um, but if you guys have enjoyed the video, comment below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.